What's happening, fellas? Like my dad used to say, if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it must be a duck. This thing looks, runs, and rides like a brand new motorcycle. It absolutely hauls ass. It's amazing that he can get a 350cc engine to accelerate as quickly as this thing does. There's a gear for every speed, six, six gear, six speed overdrive transmission, monoshock rear suspension, triple disc brakes, super lightweight, and it's got the Kenny Roberts signature on the fairing. I've been riding RDs since I was a kid. When I was 15 years old, I traded my Triumph 500 for an RD 350, an orange one, 1975. I've had a Daytona special, and uh, I've ridden a few RZ 350s. This is this one runs perfect. It has the the uh, custom dual expansion chamber exhaust on it, which is by Factory. Is it Factory Racing? Factory Racing Products. <coughs> Factory Racing Products, and it works great, man. It, it just revs to the moon, and nice set of Pirelli tires on it. Paint looks beautiful, very rare. Survivor, there's not too many of these left. I think a lot of them got crashed. I know, I know I'm responsible for totaling one of them, for sure. I think Billy, <laughs> this young man standing next to me, um, he's got a much longer pedigree with this model than I do. Billy, tell us a little bit about your history with the RZ and why this is an important bike to you. Well, it is important to me because I bought my first one. It was actually brought across the border from Canada before they were legal in the US. In the US, they had uh, catalytic converters in 84, but mine was in 83. And I, I bought mine specifically to road race. And um, it turned out to be a real winter bike for me. I rode it three seasons. It was bulletproof, durable, reliable, uh, never overheated, always on point. The, bi the bike is magnificent. 60 horsepower stock. That's insane. It's really it's more, insane. That's it's more than a CR500. Yeah, out of a 350cc engine, it's pretty cool. It hits 6,000 RPMs and the power valve rotates and bang, you're uh, in hyperspace. It's like a, <laughs> it's almost like a turbo. It is, it is. Yeah. Uh, in fact, that's how, why I totaled one of these. And the day I was riding a, uh, on the rear wheel, the first time I rode it, right. I didn't know that, that at 6,000 RPM it went into hyperspace. No, no. And I went into hyperspace right on Route 6. <laughs> that's one of the reasons oh, I have two right feet. I'll take my shoes off and show you guys someday. Oh, oh, I have God. two right feet thanks to one of these. So oh, if God. you're gonna ride wheelies, get comfortable with the uh, power. Actually, the power valve was sticking on the one I rode. Right. It was improperly right. reassembled. As many of them were, were completely hammered and destroyed by young bucks like Billy and I when we were kids. I'm sure yours ended up uh, in, uh, wound crashed up in, a couple times, right? It wound up in the scrap heap, but uh, I, I had a successful racing career with it for three seasons. And uh, But it's this is the kind of bike you can actually ride on the street in, in a very uh, gentlemanly fashion. You know, it's a bike that doesn't have to be on on the boil all the time. It They, they run down low, nice and smooth and quiet. But if you ask it, it's there. It's a fantastic machine. Extremely light. Excellent power to weight ratio, liquid cooled, uh, reed valve induction, twin carb, dual exhaust, six speed training, disc brakes. What else can I say? It just doesn't get any better than this. And they stopped making these two strokes. Uh, what, what year did they stop importing them, was it? I think 85 was the last year in the US. Uh, they kept making them and, and they came to Canada, but uh, after 85, they were unable to meet the requirements of the EPA. So, For a, for a 40 year old motorcycle, it'd be hard pressed to find a cleaner one. The bike's not perfect, but it looks absolutely stunning to me um you know if i was going to point out any defects in it there's a little uh, crack in the couple little uh discoloration on the paint on the front fender i believe that's original paint i believe the fairing is original paint on this too but i, I can't tell you for uh, for sure because we just got the bike recently uh there's one little nick in the paint right here a little bit of i call those beauty marks that uh, indicate to me it's original paint survivor the exhaust is sounds amazing on the bike it's a polished looks like stainless on the back or, or maybe aluminum uh, original factory mags. The tires look to be brand spanking new, uh, at least the rear is. Uh, still got the hairy nubs on it, you know. It looks like it, it just came out of the box. The front tire is brand new too. So brand new tires. Uh, I don't have the service order with me, but I, I will um, note in the eBay ads. Check it out on eBay. Go to KaplanCycles.com. Billy, what, what on this bike is not original besides exhaust? I see it has this, uh, a uh, um, fork brace on the front. Is that, a, is that an upgrade? Yeah, that's a definite upgrade for these. They kind of you know, stock, they were a little bit spindly. If you want to do performance riding, you'd want to have a fork brace on it. So that is either a Telefix fork brace or a replica of a Telefix. And I used exactly the same uh, brace on my racing bike that, that uh, served me so well for uh, three seasons. Um, and in the end, I uh, became the national champion. Uh, where's, your, got, where's your cup? You got my you got cup. I brought the cup. It's over, over uh, there. Check this out, guys. Billy bought this in. Um, this is the 1986 national champion AMA national champion of the RZ Challenge, which was on this particular bike here. 
So I, I think when I said Billy had a better pedigree than me, I don't think anybody <laughs> has a better pedigree with these than him. He was national champion on this bike. Right. Road race. Where'd you race? Well, the last race of the season uh, was the grand final at Daytona, and we had 40 RZ350s, all the top riders from all around the country to qualify to be there. I was on pole, won from pole. The year before, the winner of that particular race was Kevin Schwantz, who went on to be the 500cc Grand Prix champion. So it's a pretty prestigious race, and Yamaha paid good money. So, and, and I was warned that I would never uh, make any money at all doing that. But uh, my bike was faster. I was pretty good at it, and uh, we won a lot of money and wound up winning this coveted cup. I was gonna say, isn't that like a like a massive deal to win the <laughs> RZ Challenge? <laughs> yeah. Isn't well, and, like and I was thinking it's safe to say there's 40 less RZs that survived because those all got hammered to pieces. For sure. Uh, many of them crashed on the track. Isn't that like in the glory days of? We, we should. At the peak of the. Oh yeah. Could it ever get any more? No, yeah, no, that was, just, that was that was that was that was as big as it big as it ever got, right? That's right. The grids were all full. I mean, there there were never any uh, people hanging off the back. It was all like top riders, all scraping paint. You know, it was fantastic. A great time. Uh, I competed in three years uh, of the RZ Challenge at Daytona. The year before, I finished second. Wow. And Kevin Schwanz was first. Wow. So. If he got to get, get a beat by anybody, might as well be a multi-time national champion. Like he him, came right? from the back of the back and smoked us all. He lapped almost everybody in the race because he's so much better of a rider. But, uh, you know, my bike uh, turned out to be uh, the fastest in the country. I sold it to a guy who hit a house with it, and there was no more after that. The end. Yeah, the end. <laughs> the end. But it started off, I fell on the street. Uh, I had a little altercation with the police, and uh, I fell off. Um, We've seen that I, before. <laughs> but I, 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 raced, I raced the bike for three seasons, yeah. and the only time I crashed it was after I won the RZ Cup. The same day, a guy T-boned me at 70 miles an hour Jesus. at Daytona, and I went high-sided at 70. Yeah, Holy I shit. Way up in the air. You walked and, away from that? Yeah, I walked away, and, and I wanted to strangle the guy, but he, uh, he didn't want to cooperate with me. Because <laughs> 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 he took away an, a lightweight superbike cup from me that I would have won the same day. So yeah. that would have been two national championships in one day. Jesus. <laughs> so these are a great motorcycle. If I could own one, I would do it in a heartbeat because it's reliable. Uh, just a, a wonderful two-stroke motorcycle, fully developed, fully refined. The engine cases come from the TZ Yamaha line. Oh, I didn't know that. So they, they Yamaha evolved their street bike line with their road racing line. So this is a direct result of uh, their TZ Yamaha bottom end and cylinders as well. Hey, you know a few things about TZs, right, Billy? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I have, uh, hey, can, we, can we finish this video showing them his, his TZ 750? Yeah. <laughs> Billy has one of 100 factory Yamaha TZ750 road racers um, that were originally produced, 100, yeah, right? There were 200 and some. Or, or 200? Small, 200 okay. small change, but only yeah. 100, I believe, wound up staying in the U.S. How many are, are still in one piece? Uh, no one knows, but I know there's two in the Barber Museum and one in the uh, New England Motorcycle Museum right here. Right America. here in front of your desk. <laughs> yeah, right in front of my desk. Where it's going to stay, where right? Keep an eye on it. Yeah. 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 So, jeez. Um, uh, what else could we say about this bike? Do, hey, do you know what the production stats might have been, roughly? No, I have no idea what the production stats were, but they were very uh, well received worldwide. It wasn't yeah. only in America. I think they were underappreciated in America because America likes big bore, four stroke, you know, loud and proud American iron. You know, these might have been underappreciated here, but definitely not in Europe where they have an, a definite appreciation for small bore, uh, high performance motorcycles. The black and yellow paint and the Kenny Roberts signature, can you describe what that uh, well, that's bl about? Yeah, I can. Um, a guy named Fast Mikey Vils worked for Yamaha team in the early 70s, and all their race bikes had the same paint pattern on, and he single-handedly painted them all himself. Wow. And uh, I do you have, have a piece of one of his painters. I, I right? have one of his TZ750 gas tanks with his paint job. So this is a replica. That's of worth it. It's priceless, basically. It's priceless, yes. So the Kenny Roberts signature on the bike is a um, uh, very appropriate, I would say. They made a red and white version of this. Uh, that's uh, I, I actually have one now. Um, it's not running, but um, it, it's got the red and white paint scheme. The yellow is much more desirable. That's the factory Yamaha race color, right? Yes, yellow is red and, and black. Like Canadian, the Canadian factory. I always thought, yes. thought of Canada when I think yeah, of red and white. Exactly. They did offer it in America for a couple of years in red and white. But the yellow and black is the one to have. Every, this is the one that's uh, most uh, most sought after. I, I love it. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing your uh, wisdom and experience with the RZs with us today. Uh, we've all learned a little something more. My pleasure. If you have any questions about this bike, guys, give us a call at 860-454-7024. I can tell you this. We've been here since 2013, coming up on 10 years, and we've sold probably 6,000 um, classic motorcycles. 
This is the first RZ350 we've had come through the shop. We're not getting another one anytime soon. It's unlikely. We had an RZ350? Yeah, we did. But what, what was it? It was a 83 Canadian. Oh, Canadian. Just okay. Like so this is the, I, I don't know, was that a long time ago? I don't remember that one, but a few years back. Yeah, this, um, this is the only black and yellow one we've ever had. Uh, I doubt we'll get another one. Uh, so, so apparently we've had two so far. Um, we just don't see these come through, do we? No, no. I've got my eye peeled for these because I, I have that fond feeling in my heart for this particular model. Uh, and I, you just don't see them. They're not, they're unobtainium basically today. Wow. They've been consumed or, or eaten up or in collections. Well, thanks again for sharing. Guys, if you have any questions, give us a call. This is a rare opportunity to own a piece of moto history here. Thanks for watching, and God bless America.